everyone, I'm Kara Scott, and this is episode five of The Poker Brief. The month of May was jam-packed with online poker tournaments as three major series, Scoop, Powerfest, and the XL Inferno, all raged on. If you were an online poker player in May, you might just have forgotten what the sunshine or your loved one's faces looked like, as the incredible schedule kept you chained to your computer. Big overlays during Poker Fest meant that players were chasing a lot of value along with their trophies, and the Scoop event saw some big names taking down the top prizes, while XL Inferno was the biggest online festival in 8 to 8 history, including their biggest ever online buy-in event and lots of money raised for charity in the three chip-in events, over $50,000. May was also a big month for goodbyes in poker. One that surprised a lot of people was the closure of online poker room PKR. Known for their graphics and what they called 3D Texas Hold'em, PKR migrated over to the microgaming network early this year, but then in a shock move, the doors were shut over financial difficulties. Players wanting to recoup their money can watch the website status.pkr.com, and hopefully more details will be coming soon. Another big goodbye, and this one a little bit more personal to me. Launched back in 2005, Card Runners was the premier poker training site and a blueprint for many that followed. They recently announced that after a decade, they're stopping their paid video content, moving some of their library over to YouTube, and they'll be giving refunds to some of their long-term subscribers. Like a lot of people, I already knew how to play poker, but Card Runners taught me how to think about the game properly and how to win. I became a member 10 years ago. I definitely owe them a lot. They had a huge impact on the poker industry, and I wish the whole team well in all of their new projects. Thanks for making such a great community and for making poker friendly and accessible, but also profitable. From the old to the new, 8 at 8 Poker recently launched a long-term strategy under the bold banner, Taking Back the Game. Management at 8 at 8 explained that this is all about acknowledging some of the ways that poker has evolved over the years, away from what a lot of the players wanted. As one of the main leaders in the industry, they feel responsible to work and take action so that everyone enjoys the game. As for how that'll be implemented, they point to their revised loyalty program, which has been ensuring a much larger portion of players are reaping benefits, and great new games online, like Blast. But that's not all. Keep an eye open for new features and promotions coming soon at 888 Poker. And finally, the World Series of Poker. It's big, but the news last month was huge. First, not only did 8 at 8 Poker guarantee a $10 million payday to the main event champion if they qualified on 8 at 8 Poker, but also 8 at 8 Poker is going to help some of those qualifiers with their main event dreams by giving them a chance to win top-notch mentoring by some of the best in the world. They're calling it the 8 Team, and I pity the fool who misses out on a chance for some free coaching in the biggest event in poker. There are five teams from five different countries and each will be choosing their lucky qualifier. The eight team qualifier who manages to reach the highest position in the main event with the help of their mentors will also win a $12,500 World Series of Poker 2018 main event package. And mentors, they don't get much bigger than former main event champions. I can exclusively reveal that 2014 champ Martin Jacobson is joining the Swedish team as wingman to team captain Sofia Lovgren. Check out the link for more information and good luck. And finally, the really big news. After nine years of holding the World Series of Poker main event final table on a three month delay, we're going back to the old school and from the reaction of the poker community, I'd say this is a big win. There will be two days off before the final nine play down to a champion, but it's all going to happen in July. And probably even more exciting for the poker fans and viewers, the World Series of Poker, ESPN and Poker Central are all joining forces so you'll be able to watch some of the poker being played as live from the very first day one right up to the epic moment when we crown a champ. We caught up with World Series of Poker tournament director Jack Effel in Las Vegas for some insight into these big changes. What was behind making this big change? So, you know, as we always do for World Series of Poker, you know, we're always looking for new innovative ways. It just so happened that this was kind of the year to kind of think about what was gonna happen with the future of production. And so the opportunity 
presented itself to partner with Poker Central and to continue a relationship with ESPN um, to elevate kind of the, the production or the broadcast offering, to have expanded coverage, to have uh, coverage of the main event from day one on. And so, you know, from our standpoint, it made a lot of sense. So Jack, what kind of response have you gotten to the schedule change for the main event and was it what you expected? You know, I think it's mixed because, you know, the, the November 9 is a very special fraternity and everyone that was able to be part of that experience uh, in whatever year they were part of it, you know, they're always going to have that. They're going to have that four months that that's all they did is they thought about what's going to happen when I get to play against those guys at the final table for eight million bucks, the bracelet, become world champion, be live on ESPN. I mean, it's a big dream. It's a big thing. So, you know, the hit and the reality of it happening and all that stuff over a couple of days going into it versus four months, you know, I, I don't know. We'll have to kind of see it and play it out. Um, I think you would probably, or anyone else out in the audience right now would probably say, hmm, I think it would be good. Hmm, maybe it won't be good. We don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna play it out, we're gonna see. But I can tell you, having the, the live coverage, being there, feeling it, knowing that it's gonna happen, that's pretty exciting. So, I guess there is another goodbye in May. Goodbye to the November 9. Thanks for the memories. It's been great, but it's a nice change. That's all for us this time. This is The Poker Brief. I'm Kara Scott. Thanks for watching.